Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the sixth meeting of the 144th Council of the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas. Any disclosures of interest from any of the members? Seeing none, we'll move on to minutes. I have a motion that the minutes of the meeting held on February the 5th, 2024 be confirmed. Moved by Councillor Herbert, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Council will now resolve itself into committee of the whole to deal with the following business. First committee this evening is strategic direction and development. First item is uh, an application by Cannon Homes for a proposed zoning bylaw amendment for 125 Centennial Road. I have a motion that report PD 0424 relating to a proposed zoning bylaw amendment for 125 Centennial Avenue be received for information. Moved by Councillor McCulley. Seconded by Councillor Wookie. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the report. Any opposed? It is carried. Next item relates to draft official plan and zoning bylaw amendments for the position for growth implementation. I have a motion that report PD 0324 relating to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendments to implement certain recommendations of the addendum to the position for growth planning justification study be received for information and further that council authorize staff to prepare draft amendments to the St. Thomas official plan and zoning bylaw 50-88 to bring areas two and three as identified in the addendum to the position for growth study into the settlement area for St. Thomas and address policy matters in the official plan relating to housing and further that a public meeting be scheduled for March the 18th, 2024 at 6 p.m. in accordance with Ontario regulations 543-06 and 545-06 as amended to present the draft official plan and zoning bylaw amendments to the public for comments. Uh, moved by Councillor Kohler, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments on the report? Councillor Clark. Thank you, through, through you to the uh, staff. I was just wondering uh, legally what the, it was would be stopping us from also including Area 4 at this time. Mr. McComb. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor Clark. The... Um, Current projections that are in front of uh, the city right now, and they were done in 2022, identified a need for the 165 uh, hectares. That basically areas two and three. So we don't have enough uh, justification to include area four. But there's also with area four, there are some uh, technical issues surrounding just access, access like getting into it and that sort of thing. It's not a great area, um, but certainly we have the justification for areas two and three. Councilor Clark? Just a supplementary with the projected growth in the area. Uh, when when might we meet, meet those requirements? Um, your Mayor, uh, your, your Worship, through you to, to Councilor, we have an update to the population projections and housing projections um, being done. It's We have a draft report that staff are going to be talking to the consultant about, and a report for Council will follow shortly. Councillor Peters. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, just to follow through with what Councillor Clark asked, um, I would like to see us, every, so much has changed since 2022, and, and how do we initiate that process for the justification? You know, one of the other issues I look at is that, um, particularly Area 3, is virtually all owned by one person. And if that person chooses not to do anything um, on those lands, and um, then we may need some fallback position in area four, it could be the fallback. And even, even on number two, I know one of the landowners and he has no, in, and no interest in doing anything but farming dirt and not watching houses go up. So I, I'm, I'm with Councillor Clark. I'd rather see us move sooner than later on four. You've answered 
is there anything further on that? We get another census at some point, and that's really usually what usually starts this process, Jim, or is it other population numbers? Yeah, uh, thank you, Your Worship. The, the 2022 study uh, was instigated based on the 21 census so, numbers. Right. I mean, the census was done in 21, but it usually takes uh, stats can close to a year to get the numbers yep. released. So, um, so yeah, the, the numbers we're dealing with are based on that census. But none of that took into account the potential impact from Power Co. Right. And recognize that, yeah, none of the landowners that are in areas two or three, uh, potentially not, there's no developers that we're aware of that own land up in that area. But once the designations are changed, then you may see development interests approach those people to see if they're willing to sell the property for the purposes of development. And I'd just like to reiterate for council's benefit and the public that are listening, this is the first part of a sort of multi-tiered process. So this simply takes up the, um, the supply that we've identified that we need to allocate somewhere. But the uh, official plan amendment will also identify, not only will it put into a residential designation, that's a, almost like a temporary thing. It's also recommending the secondary planning approach be right. layered over top of that. And a lot of what will feed into that secondary planning uh, process is a lot of the work we're doing, updating all of our foundation studies that we're doing already as part of the official plan update process. So it'll identify whether there's a need for any additional commercial lands, park lands, you know, other designations for up in that area. And there'll be further reports for council as we move forward. Councillor Herbert, then Councillor Wookie. Thank you, Worship. Thanks, Jim. Um, it, when you approach the people to sell their land and they are firm no, what are the next steps? Are we into a situation where we have to expropriate and fight with them and just a question. Thank you. Well, Jim, I don't think you approach anybody well, to sell their land. You go ahead. Your Worship, that's quite right. So to Councillor Herbert, no, it, it's not us. It's not his staff. That'll be up to potential developers, whether there are local developers here or perhaps developers from outside of the St. Thomas area who are seeing what's going on in the city and the potential growth that we may uh, you know, achieve with respect to PowerCo coming here. And I'm sure some of those will be the ones that will be approaching those landowners. Yeah, so it's up to the builders to initiate it, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councilor Wookie. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, just a question. I don't know if this is for uh, Jim, you or Mr. Delebeck. Um, when, I take, when I think about any housing going up there and I take a look at Fingal Line being two lanes, narrow, eroding on either side, and I care a lot about active transportation, obviously we have the elevated park. But if you want, like how... I just don't see that as being a really viable transportation link moving forward. So just any kind of commentary from you or Mr. Delebuck regarding what can be done, not done to Fing online to make it more active transportation friendly um, in the long term. Thank you very much. Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Wookie, um, we're in the process of, of a transportation master plan refresh. So this is this work that's happening is perfect timing for us to be able to start to consider those other pieces. Um, is Fingal Line the right access to Northwest areas uh, two and three? Um, how do we provide alternative modes of active transportation than just the elevated bridge? So all these pieces, the question's well pointed and it goes right back to our TMP refresh. So we're on that and that should be completed by the end of the year and hopefully we'll have some answers to that later. Great. Further questions on the draft official plan? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Next item relates to the City of St. Thomas 2024 to 27 strategic plan. I have a motion that report admin ADM 0224 relating to the City of St. Thomas 2024 to 2027 strategic plan be received for information and further the council endorse and approve Brighter Future, the 2024 to 27 strategic plan, including the vision, mission, guiding values, strategic pillars and strategic priorities. And further the council direct administration to initiate a complete launch of the strategic plan, including communication and implementation processes. Moved by Councillor Baldwin Sands, Second by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments on the uh, strategic plan? Councillor Clark. Councilor Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you, I uh, just wonder what the timelines for that implementation would be. Uh, when would we see, for example, uh, 
individual targets and things like that that we can measure. Taylor? Thank you through you to Councillor Clark. Um, I would I would suggest we're looking at a late spring launch for implementation. Um, so after approval tonight by council, we'll move forward into those implementation phases that are outlined in the report. And I would suggest they'll take a, a couple months to, to get to those phases. Councillor baldwin -Chess. Thank you. The first thing that I would like to say is thank you very much for putting the land acknowledgement in right at the beginning of the strategic plan. Um, I know that you talked about this being the skeleton and we're seeing going to be seeing the pieces coming forward. Um, we do have a couple of the items, for example, on number six, underneath the pillar number six, about um, we've got something that's already on the books about multi-unit residential being EV ready. So I was hoping that rather than seeing something in late spring, that we're going to be seeing something sooner than that. Is there any possibility we can get some feedback or um, find out from Mr. Pompili if there's anything moving forward on that. And then I have another question. Mr. Pompili, yeah. we're having a full buffet tonight. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is great. Uh, uh, through your worship to, to Councillor. Sorry, I didn't hear the entire part of the question, but in, with regards to the EV reporting, um, I had planned to bring something this month and I apologize. I'm still in the, in, in process of putting a report together that I need to run by some of the other directors to get their sign off. And I'm targeting right now that first meeting in March to bring something forward. Um, so I apologize for the delay in getting that forward, but that is uh, on our radar to get, to get forward for council's review in, in the very near future. Councilor Baldwin. Well, first, thank you for that feedback. And it is part of our strategic plan and it's already something that's coming forward. So I wanted to emphasize that as part of our strategic plan. So thank you very much. And the last one is, um, my second one is the, something that's been left over from the other strategic, strategic plan that was done was the need for a new community center and aquatic facility. And I've just had a brief conversation with Mr. Bray about that and was wondering if um, underneath this strategic plan, where we are sitting for that. And I understand too, that this being the skeleton plan and the pieces that are gonna be coming forward. So maybe if I could um, ask Mr. Bray for an update on that as well. Thank you. Mr. Bray. Thank you, Mayor Preston. Through you staff, we're planning to update the parks master plan this year. Part of that update will include a feasibility study for an aquatic center for the city. Go ahead. So again, thank you for that. And because it's hitting those priority points that we're talking about for the community center in number two and for the EV um, report coming back in number six. So we're already moving forward on parts of the strategic plan and I commend staff for their diligent work on all of the above. Thank you so much. Further questions or comments? Ms. Mooney, thank you for getting us to this point. This is a large, large chunk of a strategic plan and it's the heavy lifting part. And now we put the activity to go with it and the goals to go with it. And like Councillor Baldwin Sands and like Councillor Clark, I wanna get going on it too. There's a lot to come from the rest of the uh, departments to really tell us where their strategic planning is going and we can grab onto that too. But thank you for getting us to this point. Please don't let us not do the rest of the work. Well, thank you. And if I may, I'd just like to thank council for their support over the last six, seven months uh, through this process. It's been exciting and um, we've definitely seen a lot of diverse voices um, as part of the engagement phases that we've taken part in in the last couple of months. So, a uh, big thank you to the community for, for their support, um, as well as our city leadership team, staff members, and the strategic uh, plan steering committee that consisted of a diverse group of staff members. So looking forward to the implementation and uh, next phases. Yes. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Your Worship, unless there are any further items from the members under strategic direction and development, we'll now move into community engagement and services. Nothing on the agenda at this time, unless there are any items from the members. Uh, seeing none, Your Worship, we'll now move into infrastructure and civic operations. 
Uh, first item relates to Highbury Avenue and Ron McNeil Line Roundabout, the outdoor public art. I have a motion that report ID 0724 relating to Highbury and Ron McNeil uh, Line Roundabout Outdoor Public Award Art Award be received for information and further that Council Award RFP 2023-035 to shift landscape architecture in the amount of $220,640, excluding HST, uh, being the highest scoring proposal received. Moved by Councillor Wookie, seconded by Councillor Herbert. Questions or comments on the artwork? Councillor Wookie. Thanks very much, Your Worship. Just a general comment about the, the process for Council's information, for the public's information. Uh, there are five of us on the Public Art Committee, and uh, John Allen, Sean Denier, Laura Warmke, who's the chair, myself, and Kevin DeLebeck. What's nice is there are two artists on the committee and that helps. And then you've got Kevin's point of view from the technical side of things and it was very, very important. And um, there were 13 proposals for the one piece of public art and eight for the other. So that was 21 altogether. It, it took roughly 40 minutes to review each one. It was like a report card. I kind of had, you know, I kind of had, I started my sweats from all those years of doing report cards. And, but it, it really, I think all of us in the committee agreed it took at least 10 or 12 hours to go through. And there were many, many uh, excellent pieces of artwork. And, and what I loved about the committee was that there were times where when we did have a consensus meeting, I, I remember one example where Laura said something about a piece of artwork and it, and, and, you know, and it, she, what she said was, People are going to want to cross into the middle and have their picture taken beside it, like on High Barry at Ron Manil. And you're like, right. yeah, you're right. Like, we can't really have that's not safe. Right. So, so the, you'd, you'd be enlightened in those certain ways. But um, if anybody's got any questions about the process or the, what's going on, I'd be pleased to answer them or Kevin could. But I want to say that I, uh, I said this in the committee meeting. I think everybody in the community would be happy with the transparency, professionalism, um, and the rationality of this whole process. This wasn't just we got together and said which one looks nice. Like there was a, a, a very detailed evaluation process. All of us did the scoring independently, and then and then they were you know uh, we we got the numbers together. And thanks to um, you know Kevin and Kevin's staff for everything that they did. And I just want to thank Laura Warmke for her work as the chair. So if anybody's got any questions or comments, uh, Kevin and I can field those. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Wiki. Further questions or comments on the first report? Seeing none, all those in favor? Are there any opposed? That's carried. Next report deals with the Outdoor Public Art Award for the Highbury Avenue and South Edgware Road Roundabout. I have a motion that report ID 0824 relating to this Outdoor Public Art Award be received for information and further the Council Award RFP 2023-036 to Metal Mind Forge in the amount of $132,740, excluding HST, uh, being the highest scoring proposal received. I move by Councillor Herbert, seconded by Councillor Gibson. Discussion on that report. <clears throat> Councillor Clark. Uh, just wondering in general whether we, it is our intent to put artwork at, at all roundabouts, um, I, I kind of like it at the at the four corners of our entrances, and I was just wondering, this one is is an internal one, um, and whether or not moving forward that's our intent, or or whether or not it, it, each one is a one off depending on the size and the location and all those good things. Well, I'll ask uh, Kevin, but I, I think as a council we said what a great thing to do. And we wanted, to, but I always thought the same as you. Is it at our entrance roundabouts or is it every roundabout we built? Kevin, your thoughts? Uh, through the mayor to Councillor Clark, um, that seems what it's been a bit on an ad hoc type basis. And so we can go back as staff and try and figure out some type of uh, criteria, if you will, to help guide council of, yeah, you know, this one makes sense. Or if it's just going to be um, on the peripherals of, of the city, maybe not so much in the interior. Um, we can go back and, and bring that for consideration. Okay, thank you. Further questions, Councillor Herbert? Thank you, Worship. 
Well, I, I'm looking at all the prices that these roundabouts are costing us. And is it a necessity to have uh, artwork at every roundabout? Is that the plan? Or are we just going to leave some roundabouts vacant? Well, that's what we just asked Mr. Dilerek to come back to us with, I oh, guess, okay. as we come forward with with other um, entrance roundabouts in our city. I think we'd be, we'd be given that we'll put something uh, tastefully art there, and the rest we this council will need to decide as it comes forward. We we could say no to any of these. I, I happen to like what we're doing, but that's that's your call too. So, okay, that's Kevin. Anything else uh, through the mayor to Council Herbert? I was just going to add. I don't want to speak for my ID uh, teammates, but um, I don't believe we're looking at putting uh, artwork in all the roundabouts that are going in the industrial park either. So, I think there's a, a place for for these. Further questions or comments? Seeing none. All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Same, uh, the next topic uh, is roundabout plant material. I have a motion that report PRF 0724 relating to the roundabout plant material be received for information. Moved by Councillor Wookie, second by Councillor Peters. Questions or comments on the plant material? Councillor Wookie. Thank you, Your Worship. As a gardener, I just want to say that it's awesome that uh, this grass has been chosen because it looks different in different seasons. So thank you right. very much, Mr. Bray. Yeah. Councillor Baldwin Chance. I too would like to um, thank staff for considering the differences that, that happened and the, the great amount of research that was done to test the soils, to test um, that they're drought tolerant. I think it's a very unique thing to put into our roundabouts and thanks staff very much. I agree. Further questions or comments, Councillor Clark? Will it attract pigeons? There'll be other things that will attract. <laughs> Further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Unless there are any further items from the members under this committee, we'll now move into corporate governance and administration. Uh, first item is the 2023 corporate customer service update. I have a motion that reports CC0124 relating to the 2023 corporate customer service update be received for information. I move by Councillor McCauley, second by Councillor Baldwin Sands. Questions or comments? Councillor Herbert. Thank you, Worship. Well, the customer service to me is really a great function for counselors, especially for me. When, when somebody calls me with a concern, the first thing I say, have you contacted customer service? And most times they haven't. So I ask them to contact them. And uh, if there's problems to get back to me, I, I, I would look into it. But I just wonder what is what is the, the I think, there's a, is there a new process now or a process that if I call in for a complaint, when can I expect an answer? Is there a good follow-up to me? And I think there's there's something further on about being a digital now or something. I'm is is that what I'm looking at, John? Is it John? Thank you. I knew we could get John away from his computer and get up to the microphone. <laughs> Thanks, Your Worship. And through to Councillor Herbert. Uh, the timeline has not changed. The customer service plan the council adopted is still a 24-hour response time for an initial response, but it doesn't mean that the entire request is dealt with necessarily that quickly. But we're still aiming for follow-up to the customer within that 24 hours. So, so follow -up. So do you contact the person? Say there's something that's going to take three weeks to sort out. You contact the customer and say, look, we've got it. We're looking into it. It'll be a minimum three weeks, but we're I sure you will get back to you. Yeah, that's the intent of the plan is that if the response is going to take longer than 24 hours, we're reaching out to let them know approximately the time frame. Because some requests take months, depending on what it is. Spring restoration doesn't happen until the spring, that kind of thing. Thank you very much. Councillor Clark. Well, just wondering what, with the uh, information that's gleaned from these reports, for example, the two that stand out are property standards and tidy lot complaints. How will they inform us as we move forward with bylaws? Maybe Kevin, maybe. And I get what Councillor Clark is saying, since we're getting most of our customer service requests in those two areas, does do we take that into account into our future planning or um, 
setting yes. the standard in a different way or in a better way so people understand what a tidy lot or or, or property standard is? Uh, through the mayor uh, to Councillor Clark, there's there's two ways that we can use this information. One is we change the policy about it in order to reduce the complaints, or if those complaints continue to come in, we need to change the resources to respond to those. So we help use this as an indicator to be like, is the workload manageable? What, and you will see that in terms of the, the time that it takes to get a response to those issues being resolved, if that starts to grow as well. So we use this information to help inform our business plans and, and work plans on a, on a yearly basis. But if, again, like if it be, these become too surmountable, then maybe we've got to come back to council and say, maybe we need to make some changes to the, the tidy lot bylaw, for example, um, and maybe reduce some of the, the criteria. Councillor Baldwin Sands. Thank you for that answer. If you could please stay, because my question is along the same vein. I believe when we created this a few years ago, it created that level of best practices just internally as well as externally, and how customers handle those um, and how the citizens are getting responses to those. And as you say, how nimble you are within the city departments in order to make that happen. My question um, is going to be with that continued elevated service level, are there now other communities that are looking to this type of model and saying, this is great. And this is accomplishing all of the needs that it needs to um, creating that level of best practices, et cetera, creating that level of internal um, changes to how we um, offer our policies, et cetera, then how we address that. Are there other communities that are doing something very similar or are they looking to us for leadership? Thank you. John? Uh, through the Mayor, Councillor Bob and Sands, I don't know that they're necessarily reaching out actively, but we have seen uh, through various webinars and other things, there are lots of other communities that are leveraging as much technology as they can. Um, to help with service requests and managing those. Um, we, we do have a pretty good history here now that we've developed over the last eight years or so. So we certainly have have, have uh, helped other communities if they've asked questions, but. Uh... Further questions or comments? Councillor uh, Peters? Thanks, for, <clears throat> thanks Your Worship. Um, John, how can we use some of this information to target, say some of our social media campaigns of, of saying, look, uh, this is what the Titan Lot Bylaw is all about. And just to try and get the message out of how uh, how important it is that we've got this bylaw in place and what you can do as a homeowner might have a the reverse effect of causing more business to come in. Um, but my second is uh, that goes along that lines, as someone who uses customer service on a regular basis, um, I can think of, at least one property that comes to mind that I have submitted multiple um, customer service requests in on, they've been dealt with, but they're repeat offenders. And how do we, how, how do we give staff the tools or do we need to find a way to um, encourage those repeat offenders to be a little more diligent in staying on top of their properties? John, thoughts on that? Yeah, through to, to Councillor Peters. So, um, and the city manager's office is working with communication strategies and social media, and, and some of that is creating new content. And we're, we're seeing it. We're trying to do with clerks and, and an environmental, trying to get more just general information. Did you know? Uh, how do you to kind of? And we can certainly work with departments to help provide context for what some of the more common requests we're getting. Some of the common phone calls, such as tidy lot or parking. Um, in terms of the repeat defend, or like offenders, um, I know environmental services planning, they, they deal with those issues. It, it's it's tough because if it gets resolved, it's it, a lot of those are complaint driven and they might come year after year, they might come three or four or five times a year. So something to consider, like Kevin mentioned about uh, resources and, and looking at uh, in future considerations. Further questions or comments? John, if I could just say, look, if the numbers are going up and they're going up in the right way in the sense that more people are finding a way to tell their city what they would like from it. I, I, I can only go back my five years in this position and say the first year was 
call me on my phone or email me or, or social media reports, and that would be the only way I'd get the message. We have, as a conscious effort of council and through customer service, sent more people through customer service so we can see a record of what of what we're clearly seeing. But I'm now at the point where we're really getting compliments, as Councillor Baldwin Sands said, of, wow, I just called about a pothole and it seemed like, what, were they around the corner? Because they just went and fixed it immediately. And I, I'm sorry, I just had a standard that's way too high for our roads people. But it, it is incredibly good the movement towards customer service being the place to anything that you want to ask about the city, even positive things, uh, bus schedules, or whatever, use it for that purpose and then they'll get back to you. So for those watching at home and for those that uh, still continue to think posting on Facebook is a way to get something fixed on your street, um, customer service at stthomas.ca or 631 one six eight zero push zero, and a record is taken of what you're, you you need done. And as you can see here, we're looking at it now. Over thirty five hundred people had something to say about their city last year, and we'd like it to be five thousand. We really would. If if this department becomes busier, we'll find a way to deal with that. That means we're giving service to the people we serve. John, thank you for being the front of the line on that, and thank the people working with you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor. Any opposed? Carried. Next item relates to community grant applications for February 2024. I have a motion that report TR0424 relating to the community grant applications for February 2024 be received for information and further council approve the community grant request for Kettle Creek Conservation Authority in the amount of $3,600 and further, the council approved the community grant request for VON Seniors Picnic in the Park for $2,500. Moved by Councillor Baldwin Sands, seconded by Councillor Kohler. Okay, questions or comments on the Kettle Creek and the Seniors in the Park? Councillor Peters? Um, thanks. I, I had had a call about the, uh, the St. Thomas Golf and Country Club, and I guess I didn't realize it was more of a fundraising event. Um, well, because... right, right now we're on the Kettle Creek and the CO, oh, oh. on the VON. We'll get to that one, I think, in, in the next report. Not to, not to stop you, because I had the same questions. Seeing no other comments on it, all in favor of the first two. Carried. So are you going to... Do two more or three more? Your Worship, I believe this was uh, all the applications that were received for this time period. Uh, possibly the treasurer has uh, further information about a future time. Okay, the others were recommended not to be approved. Is that, that where we are, Mr. Treasurer? Okay, great. So I'll, I'll entertain questions or comments on the other three that were on this list if you're looking for them to be approved. Councillor Peters? No, my, and my question was um, regarding the St. Thomas Golf and Country Club, because I had the impression that it was an event that was being planned beyond just um, for the hospital, that this was a, gonna be a celebration of the 125th anniversary of the Golf and Country Club, which had its origins in Pinafore Park and right. spent many years here in St. Thomas before moving out there. And it's certainly been a, a show place uh, facility. Uh, and I know the city's used it countless times to help right. uh, showcase the community and, and hold events. So I just wonder if Dan could go a little further into, um, um, were there other parts of that request that could have been supported? Mr. Treasurer, the reason for not approving this one or suggesting not approving it? Thank you, three of you. Um, the other part in the uh, policy does say it's gotta be within the city of St. Thomas. And I didn't mention that in the report, but it, it also doesn't, would be excluded because it's not in the city. Okay, on any of the other requests, Councillor Peters or Councillor Herbert? Thank you, Worship. 
Well, I'd like to speak again for the STEAM Center, uh, their request, their request that uh, uh, they're not, they only get their money from grants and funding and donations. And we're looking at something here to refurbish old computers that would be given to these people. And, and, and I, I just, we're always talking about the STEAM Center, what they do for the city, what they do for the kids. And, and, and I just thought that this is something that we, we, we should be taking a look at it, in my opinion. So, and I see it's not to be approved, but just my comment, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to make a motion we do it, but uh, uh, maybe I will make a motion that we accept the STEAM Center. Okay, so I'll go from there. I'll go there. Um, Councillor Herbert would need a seconder and then to win the majority of the council. I don't see a seconder, so I think the rest are looking at the proposal from the treasurer. Anything else on the rest of the grants? Seeing none, we move on. Uh, Your Worship, we're just look. Uh, did we already vote on that? We voted on the two that were approved okay. in the beginning. We didn't add any more. Thank you, Worship. We'll now move into 2024 Southwestern Public Health Levy. I have a motion that report TR0524 relating to Southwestern Public Health 2024 Levy be received for information. Moved by Councillor Wookie. Seconded by uh, Her Councillor Herbert. Questions or comments? Councillor Peters, Councillor Clark. Okay. Your Worship, if we didn't like the police budget, we could turn it down. And then, er, unless the process has changed, and then it would go to an outside body that used to be called OCOPS. I'm not sure what it is now. And OCOPS would say yay or nay to, uh, to the decision that council had made. Is there no ability to do anything like uh, asking for a second opinion uh, from any provincial agency? I'd have to ask my clerk or city manager if they know of any way where that can be appealed and come back. Your Worship, uh, through you, I'm going to ask Mr. Sheridan to respond to the issue around the funding for public health on this one. And because he's done, uh, he has done his research on this and has had a discussion with it. Super. Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, through you. Um, uh, I, I reached out to the Ministry of Health and I haven't received any answers on that. The, the answer is at this point, I don't know what other alternatives there are to appeal the levy or anything like that. I'll move, I'll move along, see if we can answer from one of the other questions. Councillor Clark. I think a good place to start then would be to, uh, to vote no on this and uh, send a message that we we'd like to see how we can appeal it. I think this is ridiculous. I mean, we've set budgets and we did a good job. And uh, every year we get outside bodies like this uh, with outrageous budget requests. And uh, we had to pare back and decide in, in good faith what we could do to deliver services to the citizens of St. Thomas, uh, keeping in mind their ability to pay. And then, and then now we get a request for you know three hundred thousand more, with with no regard for uh, the for the taxpayer, and I don't know uh, maybe the members that are representing us on this board could tell us what kind of good things are going to happen uh, that would in increase it by thirty four percent compared to you know usually wages drive things which would be in a three or four percent range so I I'm surprised at this. If you'd like me to answer that before we take other questions, I will. As the former chair and now a member, just a member of the of the health unit, over time it, it, with the merging of health units and this now being a very large health unit, and St. Thomas, I believe, is 29% of its total funding, um, we, we have a number of uh, smaller municipalities and other areas in Elgin County and in Oxford County represented on this board and four members of outside board members now on there. And there really is a lot of great discussion at health health board about how could they do better. And when the, when the, when it's spread out, it feels better. 
it just it, it just comes to us in a pretty lump sum because we're full third of the total funding for the Southwest Public Health uh, Board or unit. Um, as you and I have had the discussion and many here have had the discussion, health is not in a municipal budget. We just don't have it there. And yet this seems to be a way for some other municipalities to put it into their budget in a less impactful way than we have to because we're a very large chunk of this. So that's that's how the budget got to this point at, at, at Southwest Public Health. Each year we, we talk about telling them ahead of time you're limited to a certain percentage and when I think we need to be a lot firmer on on doing that I will say that Councillor Herbert sits on the health unit as do I and we weren't in favor of what was done last year and this large increase had to do with piling on to the additional costs of last year too so it isn't a one-year cost but once you increase costs then the next year all of those costs stay in place and more go on top so that's what that's what this one is. So I'll go to Councillor Kohler. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, basically, was going to ask that too, but this this report's very frustrating because I know we already voted against the last information report that came forward, and to just get back another report that says Section seventy two says you have to pay this regardless. That's very frustrating for me because I know some of the conversation that went around that night was what have you done to try to mitigate some of this increase? But then we just get an information report back and says, doesn't matter, just pay it, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's the frustrating thing. It's almost as frustrating as the zoning applications that we put forward in here. So I, I certainly would like to see what we could do and you know lobby, lobby the uh, provincial government to see what we can do to at least have some say, because you know to just come back and, and do this and hopefully our members can go back and uh, express at least my frustration that that's the only information we got back is that we're not even going to tell you what we did to try to mitigate this 37% increase. Just pay it because section 72 says you have to. Uh, Councillor Gibson. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Your Worship. I would just like to uh, just say that uh, I agree with uh, Peters, Kohlers and Clark here. Um, I was really flabbergasted at the percentage, like, our, like, Really, and then to tell us that we we have to pay it, and there's no real reason why, other than other than the upper government telling us we have to, and there's no real detail as to what they're spending this extra all this money on, and what are the other municipalities are paying. And you're just you you, you have mentioned that, that we are the larger bout, but why so much? Thank you. Well, I I said we are a fairly large chunk, but Oxford pays well over fifty percent. I think fifty four percent of the total cost of Southwest Public Health is paid by Oxford and Woodstock. And the other half of the what's left over is Elgin County. Um, but each of the members from those has voted yes for this. So, Councillor uh, Wookie. Thank you, Worship. I'm as frustrated by this as everybody else, but having sat on the board for four years, and I, I would like to hear from them in person regarding this, but I, I would suggest the answer is going to be we are mandated. We don't do anything that's not mandated. We are doing things mandated by the provincial government, the provincial government saying we have to do this. And they're telling us that this is how we're going to collect the money. And it's going to be from you is what I guess is going to be. But I would certainly appreciate hearing that, frankly, in, in person rather than this one page report. So I... I think that they are not doing anything that's optional, but I could be wrong because I'm not on the board anymore. So if we could hear from the members who are on the board, my guess is that they are mandated by the problems to do this, all the things they're doing. And my guess is the board is, as a total, have done their best to try to do that in as cost-effective a way as possible, although it's outrageous, the increase. So thank you. Uh, city manager, did you have a... No, uh, then I will suggest, I will ask the uh, executive director of Southwest Public Health to come and do a deputation to us and, and, and maybe answer some of our questions. Your Worship, if I could, I, I just want to clarify, um, I appreciate the comments made with respect to the report that's in front of you. The message that's being provided to you is from, from the treasurer based on the information about what we have to do in terms of funding it. I, I do think, though, if you want 
uh, feedback, and a number of you have talked about this, including the mayor, then you write, we, you ask us to write or direct us to write a letter to the board and ask them to present to you here uh, along with their staff. Councillor Herbert, Councillor Paul Sands, go Thank ahead. Thank you, Worship. Uh, there's no question, uh, Your Worship, myself did not support this. And, and uh, uh, I, I really feel our hands are kind of tied because I remember our, our treasurer, Dan Sheridan, said that we basically have to pay it. So, but I'd be curious to hear what our treasurer has to say, just what our rights are, what we can do, what we can do, or can we do anything? So, be my question to Dan. Go ahead, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, through you. Um, at this point, uh, I did contact the Ministry of Health to find out what our options are, but I have not received an answer yet from them. Um, and just clarifying this report, all it is is for information. It's not for approval. Right. Um, by the act, we're required to start payments, but we pay monthly. So we wouldn't be paying the whole thing up front, but we're required to start paying this money. If something changes down the line, then it could be adjusted later on. Uh, Councillor Baldwin, chance first. Thank you. If direction is required, I would put it forward for direction, please. Okay. Councillor Clark, did I see your hand? You're... I, w I just wanted to add to what Councillor Wookie said. All of the things that are in that Southwest Public Health mandate and budget and their strategic plans are of course mandated by the province for them to do. Other health units have found ways to either do them as a website rather than committing four people to it, those types of ways of, of, of getting them done. It's caused other health units near us to lay off staff this year and not raise their, their budgets in the way that this has happened. So I just thought I would share that. So, accepting the report, I guess. All those in favor? Councillor Clark, did you have a... Uh, can I have a recorded vote, please? Your Worship, is it Council's intent to, uh, once it deals with the report, to provide direction to staff? That was... Because all this is is accepting the report, right. so recording who accepted it, I guess. So, right. are we are we asking for further direction after accepting the report? To the degree we said we'll ask the the board of of health to come and do a deputation, or Councillor Clark. Well, I'd like to see if we have any consensus of uh, asking staff to not pay it and find out whether we get fined or what what the legal status is. I'd like to take a stand on this. I think you'll have a deputation here pretty quick if you were to say that. But I'm not certain, as, as has been presented by the treasurer, that we can say that under the Municipal Act. Councillor Kohler? I will vote in favor of receiving the report, but I'm with Councillor Clark. I would like to know what we can do and, and investigate that, but would like to support Councillor Baldwin Sands' direction on getting somebody here to give us some answers. Because as you said, as our member, other health units have done things to mitigate their expense. We voted against this once already, and I guess that's our fault that we didn't provide that direction. I was hoping to get some sort of answer back, but through this, the direction I would like some answers on this and what they've done because yeah. it's just it's an outrageous increase and to just sit there and say section 72 says you have to pay it so pay it so i i i agree with councillor clark i i'd like to send a message and say tell us what you're doing with this money and then what have you done to try to mitigate it because this could backtrack all the way to either a, a, a deficit in our budget where we have to look at finding different ways but without them doing anything so if if our motion was to accept the report and ask for information from Southwest Public Health, are we in the right field then? I'm seeing nods, so I'm going to ask for a vote on that. All in favor of that. 
Any opposed to that? It is carried. Uh, sorry, Your Worship. Um, with the motion, there was a request for a recorded vote. Oh, sorry, you're right. I forgot. And is it is it the people. intent of the original mover and seconder that we add a clause uh, directing staff to contact uh, South Southwestern Public Health, or would Council prefer to have that done by direction? Well, let's 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 go let's go back to the beginning. We did have a mover and seconder, and and are they okay with what we've done, or do we want to move someplace else? Who is our mover and seconder? Uh, Councillor Wookie, second by Councillor Herbert. You okay, Councillor Herbert? Councillor Wookie, okay. Friendly amendment to add direction. Okay. And direction. Okay. Uh, Your Worship, then I'll start with the recorded vote. Councillor Baldwin Sands. Yes. Uh, Councillor Clark. Nope. I, I've no. got mine on. Okay. No. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Herbert. Yes. Councillor Kohler? Yes. Councillor McCauley? Yes. Councillor Peters? Yes. Councillor Wookie? Yes. Your Worship? Yes. Uh, Your Worship, motion is passed. Okay. Uh, if there's no further items for this committee, Council will now reconvene into regular session. I have motion that the recommendations, directions, and actions of Council and Committee of the Whole as recorded in the minutes of this date be confirmed, ratified, and adopted. Moved by Councillor Bookie, seconded by Councillor Herbert. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next, we move into reports of committees. Uh, first report relates to a heritage alteration permit for the property at 539 Talbot Street. A motion that report MHC 0124 relating to the heritage alteration permit for the property at 539 Talbot Street be received for information and further the council issue a heritage alteration permit for the property at 539 Talbot Street relating to application HAP 0124 subject to completion of the work indicated in the submission dated January the 3rd, 2024. Moved by Councillor McCauley, second by Councillor Gibson. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next, we move into petitions and communications. The first item is a request for a proclamation and flag raising from the St. Thomas Guides. I have a motion that Council of the City of St. Thomas proclaim February the 22nd, 2024 as World Thinking Day in the City of St. Thomas and further that the World Thinking Day flag be flown at City Hall from February the 22nd to February the 28th, 2024. Moved by Councillor Bookie, seconded by Councillor McCauley. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. The mayor may need help on the 22nd to do this proclamation. Next item is a request for a proclamation from the Passion for Parkinson's Foundation. I have motion that Council of the City of St. Thomas proclaim April the 11th, 2024 as World Parkinson's Day in the City of St. Thomas. Moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Kohler. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next item is a, a letter received from Railway City Brewing uh, requesting that council permit the retail sale of beer on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, both at Railway City and Caps Off Brewing Company. I have a motion that the letter received be uh, referred to administration for a report. Moved by Councillor Herbert, seconded by Councillor McCauley. Uh, questions or comments? And then I have one. Uh, Good Friday, Friday and Easter Sunday are coming up. Will we get back to this before then? Your, Your Worship, there is a process um, that includes uh, a certain notice period, and then also uh, in a, in anticipation of a report and bylaw. And following the bylaw, there is a thirty one day pe uh, period. So uh, it will not be available for the 2024 season. Okay, and we have followed that exact procedure every time. Okay. Next. I'm just uh, waiting for the vote. We have to vote on it? Okay, uh, all yeah. those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. 
Next item is a copy of a letter addressed to the Premier of Ontario from the Town of Hanover regarding a social and economic prosperity review of provincial funding to municipalities. Uh, the second item under petitions is a letter received from Chief Joe Miskakoman, Chippewas of the Thames First Nation regarding recent discussions with Mayor Preston. Uh, Your Worship, unless there are any further items from the members under petitions, we'll now move into unfinished business of council. Councillor Baldwin Sands. Thank you. I was at an event on the weekend and someone had pointed out to me that there's been no movement on Wall of Fame. Um, so I was wondering if there's any way we can get a report generated back mm -hmm. and hopefully if Councillor Kohler has anything to add, maybe he could add something to the Wall of Fame as well. Um, why we haven't seen any movement in the last little while and how we can unstop the bottleneck that's happened. Okay. I, I don't have anything to add to that, but I, I'd be interested to see a report back where we stand on it because yeah, I, I had some people yeah. contact me as well that uh, wondering where, where we are in that. I'll wait for the report. Any other unfinished business? We'll now move into new business. Unless there are any items of new business from members of council, we'll now move into bylaws. I have motion that leave be granted to bring in the bylaws. Moved by Councillor Peters, second by Councillor Baldwin Sands. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. I have a motion by Councillor Peters, seconded by Councillor Baldwin Sands that the bylaws be now read a first time, referred to Council and Committee of the Whole, and read a second time. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. First bylaw, please. First bylaw is a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council meeting held on the 12th day of February 2024. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Second bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 45 89, being a bylaw to revise and consolidate certain uh, bylaws re regulating traffic and parking of motor vehicles. Uh, this relates to yield signs on Scott, Curtis, and St. Catherine Streets. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next bylaw, please. Third bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 45 89, being a bylaw to revise and consolidate certain bylaws regulating traffic and the parking of motor vehicles. This relates to restricted parking, one way streets, stop signs at Scott, Curtis, Keynes, and St. George streets. Questions or comments? Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, recorded vote, please. On bylaw number three, Councillor Baldwin Sands? Yes. Councillor Clark? Yes. Councillor Gibson? Yes. Councillor Herbert? Yes. Councillor Kohler? Yes. Councillor McCauley? Yes. Sorry. Councillor Peters? No. Councillor Wookie? Yes. Are your worship? Yes. Madam Chair, bylaws passed. Uh, next bylaw, please. Fourth bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 45 89, being a bylaw to revise and consolidate certain bylaws re regulating traffic and parking of motor vehicles. <clears throat> this relates to no parking zones on Main Street. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next bylaw, please. Fifth bylaw is a bylaw to adopt official plan amendment number 108 to the City of St. Thomas official plan. This relates to a new warehouse development at 50 Silver Street. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Next bylaw, please. 
Six bylaws, a bylaw to amend bylaw 50-88 being the zoning bylaw for the city of St. Thomas. This is to permit a new warehouse development at 50 Silver Street. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried, next bylaw please. Seventh bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 50-88 being the zoning bylaw for the city of St. Thomas. This is to permit a new 12 unit residential development at 125 Centennial Avenue by Cannon Homes. Questions or comments? Mr. Peters. Madam Chair, recorded vote please. On bylaw number seven, Councillor Peters. No. Thank you. Councillor Wookie. Sorry. I think we have too many mics on. We only have three max. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship. Yes. Councillor Baldwin Sands. Yes. Councillor Clark. Yes. Councillor Gibson. Yes. Councillor Herbert. No. Councillor Kohler. Yes. Councillor McCauley. Yes. Madam Chair, the bylaw is passed. Next bylaw, please. Eighth and final bylaw is a bylaw to amend bylaw 36 2019, being a bylaw to regulate the use of the lands in erecting, locating, or using of land, buildings or structures within the city adjacent to or in the vicinity of the St. Thomas Municipal Airport for the purposes of ensuring compatibility with airport operations with the safe operation of the airport. And this is to up update the mapping to reflect the new city of St. Thomas boundary. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Carried. I rise to report the successful passing of eight bylaws. I have a motion by Councillor Peters, seconded by Councillor Baldwin Sands. Let me just lost my spot here. Let the report of council and committee of the whole on the eight bylaws be received and adopted. The same be read a third time and gross signed by the mayor and clerk sealed and numbered. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Uh, Your Worship, no public notices or notices of motion. Uh, there is a need to move into closed session. We, um, we are two minutes late for our open meeting, our public meeting. So can we move to the public meeting and then come back while we're still in open session and go into closed session from there? Or I'll take your advice. That will work? Okay. Well, we'll now move into our public meeting. There'll be nothing else on the open agenda when we come back, but we will have closed agenda to follow. Uh, call the public meeting to order. Public meetings required under the Planning Act to afford any person an opportunity to make representation with respect to an official plan and zoning bylaw amendment for the lands known as 44197 Ron McNeil Line. The proposal is for a new industrial facility. Before we begin, members of the public are advised that if a person or public body does not make an oral submission at the public meeting or make written submission to the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas before the bylaws are passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision to the, of the Council of the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas to the Ontario Land Tribunal. Further, if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Corporation of the City of St. Thomas before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. Those wanting to be notified of the Council's decision should email customer service at customer service at stthomas.ca, that famous customer service line, and provide their name and address. Those who do not have access to a computer and wish to be notified should call customer service at 519-631-1680, extension zero, and provide that same information. Do any of the members have a member of council have a disclosure of interest concerning any of the matters on this agenda? Seeing none. 
Madam Clerk, what method of notice and when was notice given to the public for this meeting? Your Worship, notice was provided through the St. Thomas Times Journal newspaper on Friday, January the 19th, 2024. And in accordance with council policies, notice was also mailed to property owners within 120 meters of the subject property. Great. I will introduce Mr. McComb, who will provide background information on the proposal and present the draft bylaws. 